Good afternoon. Today, we remember a crime for which international law itself forbids forgiveness. It is the worst crime of all, that of genocide, the deliberate destruction of a race in whole or part, the slaughter of one million, perhaps more, Armenians began on this day in 1915 as the Allied fleet approached Gallipoli, while that night in Constantinople, Armenian intellectuals, writers, priests, teachers, Dashnak leaders were rounded up, and most of them were never seen again. They were executed without trial, and of course followed by hundreds of thousands of others, their bodies dumped in the Euphrates and other rivers which ran red with blood. Their property, their money was stolen, their women, children, old men forced on death marches through the desert. In 1915, the Allies declared this a crime against humanity, promised it would be punished and yet no prosecution ever proceeded. And it's never been acknowledged by Turkey, the successor to the Ottoman perpetrators. That message, you'll get away with it, was said by Hitler to his generals to encourage them to commit atrocities in Poland. They would escape because who now remembers the Armenians? Well, today we do. And genocide denial, we know, is a form of continuing the crime against humanity by a crime against memory. In my book, The Inconvenient Genocide, I carefully researched all the evidence and concluded, and I've been a former ju UN judge of the uh, court, war crimes court in Sierra Leone. And my conclusion was that this was genocide, the intentional destruction of a race for religious or ethnic reasons beyond any reasonable doubt. Since that book was written seven years ago, there's more and more evidence come to light to prove that. The Pope calls it the first genocide of the 20th century. Popes aren't infallible, and it was in fact the second. The first was the German destruction of the Herero people in Namibia. But uh, they, of course, Followed it with, and the Germans were very helpful to the Turks in the course of the genocide, but they did use exactly the same language when it came to the Jews, the pretense of merely relocating them when they were sending them to their deaths. And of course, it's continued, it's continued in Rwanda, in Bangladesh. Uh, against the Rohingya, this same language and techniques of lethal hatred. But Turkey tries still to get away with it, military necessity, a preposterous defense. But it's an influential country. I remember when I was researching my book, I came across a memorandum to British ministers from the Foreign Office telling them not to acknowledge the genocide. They said in the memo, this is unethical not to acknowledge it, but because Turkey is neuralgic, which was a correct word on the subject, and because of our commercial and strategic links with Turkey, Denial is the only feasible option. Well, that was outrageous. And since my book uh, was published, it caused the Foreign Office to slightly change its tune. Now it simply doesn't 
answer the question of whether there was genocide because there is only one answer. Raphael Lemkin, the law professor who came up with the concept of genocide and drafted the convention, uh, had very much the Armenian genocide in his mind and his writing uh, because that is precise, precisely what it was. And unless it was called out and remembered, it will continue. And uh, in the minds, even the genes of Turkish and Azerbaijani people, you saw what they did last year to poor little Nagoro Karabakh. Still, they were infected with hatred. Those Turkish drones that killed your people, the Turkish recruitment of fighters in Syria, all done to support the hatred of the Azeris for a country that has never belonged to them in history. And uh, they demanded it. And what did the world, and they went to war. And what did the world do? Nothing. It turned a blind eye to this war of aggression by uh, the Azeris and the Turks. Silence, disgusting silence, came from the Security Council, despite its proclaimed responsibility to protect. They all hid behind the pandemic and left things to Russia, which is a faithless friend to Armenia, and the sooner it perhaps it realizes that, the better. But in the meantime, the struggle goes on. How do you continue it? Well, very simply, by laughing and dancing and singing and celebrating your survival while remembering the million martyrs. You should cling to your culture, venerate it, because it's not only survived, but it flourishes in Armenia and in the diaspora. And keep researching, find even more proof of what is unforgettable and unforgivable, the Armenian genocide. Thank you. Thank you.